Welcome to Player Quick Start. This tutorial is for people who just want to use MapTool as a player. Yes, MapTool is a very feature-rich program that can do many different things, but really nearly all those features are for whoever's going to be running the game, whoever's going to be making the map and so forth. As a player, you really only, only need to know a couple different things. So what we're going to do is just quickly cover how to connect to other computers, how to move around the map, and then how to use the chat window to send messages and roll dice. So when you first fire up MapTool here, you're just going to see this green field and a bunch of these windows open. As a player, you really don't need hardly any of them open at all, so you can just X them out and get rid of them. Obviously, you're going to need the chat window and maybe a macro window. I'll cover what a macro is here in a second. But first, one thing to note is that these windows are dockable, so you can just grab the top here and drag them around wherever you want. Drag them right to the side here, like the chat window on the side myself, just so I can see a little log of what's been happening. Also, you have the tack here where you can tack it to the side so it's out of the way. If you need more screen space, and just when you point at them, it'll pop back up. Can make it permanent there too. So then, how to connect to other computers? Um, you just go to File and go to Connect to Server. And there's three different ways to connect to a server here. If, uh, but for all of them, you do need to type in a username, so something you'll be known by. Um, if your GM gave you a password, type in whatever that password is, and then your role is going to be a player. So then, if he gave you, if your GM gave you a server name, your server will be listed in the server list here, and you can either type in the name or just find where it is here and double click on it. If you're close uh, connected in a local network with through a router or something like that, your server will be listed here. So you can just click on that and click OK. Or if direct access means um, if he gave you the IP address, and this is the default port number, which is what I'll probably use, but if you change it for some reason, he'll give you that number and you just put it right in there as well. So in any case, you just select your server, click OK, give it a couple seconds, and there you are. Now when you first connect, you're going to be zoomed way in here and you're, and you're going to be at the zero, 00 coordinate. Now the coordinates are listed down here as you move around. Now to zoom in and out, using the keyboard you can use the minus key to zoom out and the plus key to zoom in, or you can use your mouse wheel. You just roll the mouse wheel and you can very quickly zoom in and out. So that's a very you know quick and easy way that you can zoom in and out is using the mouse wheel. If you don't though you can use the plus and minus key. Then to move around, you just use the right mouse button. Just click and hold and drag that around. That's so you can quickly pan around. Now we're going to be zooming in on our little intrepid hero here. Now as I point at him, you can see those different lines that pop up. That's because I drew in some vision blocking. So if, that, if your GM is using that, those are the lines of vision of where you can see and where you can't. So right out here are places that if there are tokens in there, you wouldn't be able to see them. Now if you were using Fog of War, those might be blacked out areas. So they're just black and you have no idea what's back there. But as you know, with light sources as you move, they'd be revealed. So for the tools you're going to use as a player is really just this interaction tool right here, where you have these two parts of it. One is the selection tool where you can select your token and move them around. The other is the measurement tool. That's where you just click and you drag and you want to measure distance for movement or for range for a weapon or something like that. That's the way you can figure this out. Right now I have it put down as each hex is five units of measurement, so that's how it's measuring that out, and you can see it's showing you the path there. Now if it didn't have snap to grid going, which is what I have right now, it wouldn't show you, it wouldn't highlight those hexes anymore, it would just give you a line, a straight line. Now something I want to point out, especially for new players, they often have a problem with this, is you want to measure something, so you click the measurement tool and measure it, and then you want to quick go back and do something with your token, but now you get frustrated because you can't do anything with your token. That's because you didn't click back to the selection tool yet. You have to click back and then you can select your guy and move him around. But now let's say you're trying to move around a corner, but you're moving up here, you see you're, you're measuring in a straight line. You're not measuring around the corners, so you're not getting an accurate measurement. Well, you get around corners by using waypoints. And it's very easy. You just go to the corner and you tap the space button. Tap the space bar and that creates that little red dot and it will measure around that corner. You can see it just keeps measuring and measuring and do as many waypoints as you need. Then you release and oh, see look at that. A couple of goblins popped up. They were hiding behind those trees. Now that you've moved you can see between. Now let's say you're moving your guy around a little bit and you accidentally released him. You're like, oh I didn't want to move there. But you're not sure exactly where you were. Well you can revert your last move. You just right click on your token, go down to the bottom here and click revert to last move and you move right back to where you were. Now also in some systems, facing is an important thing. What direction are you facing? Now you can change facing by just making sure you're selected. You know, you have this little candy cane around you, showing that you're selected. Hit the shift button and roll your mouse wheel. See the little yellow arrow pops up and shows you where you're facing. Now if you don't have a mouse wheel, it's okay. You can right click and the very first thing here is set facing. And wherever your cursor points is where you're facing and you left click and you select that facing. To get rid of facing, you just again right click and go to clear facing and you're good to go. 
Now, a couple things I want to point out in your preferences. Call that up under edit there. So first, options under facing. You can, if you unchecked both of these, you'd just be facing the different sides. So if you're in a hex grid, you'd just be facing the hex sides. If you're in a square grid, you'd just be facing those four square sides, which for most systems probably isn't enough. So you at least want to like check the vertices so you could do the diagonals as well. A couple other things to note is if you go to your application, auto show fog of war, that is an option. That's not an automatic. So if you don't have that checked, you'd have to use control I to have it reveal the fog for you. Otherwise, auto show will automatically reveal for you. Then under sounds, this is a little pet peeve of mine. I don't like the little beeps, the little system beeps when different things are happening, like someone's texting you or, so, or something like that. So I typically uncheck that myself. But that's really it for moving around the map. It's pretty basic. Um, now for sending messages and using the chat window, you just you know, type in whatever you want to send. So you say, I attack the darkness. Hit enter, and there he goes, who sent it and what the message is. Pretty basic. Um, there are some other commands where you can like whisper to, to a certain user or to send a message just to the GM, something like that. To see a list of those, you do slash help. And there's a list here then of all the different commands and their descriptions. And for any of these, it's slash and then the command. And the aliases are just shortcuts. So for example, to clear the, the chat window here, um, slash CLR, which is the little, one of the little aliases listed here. Hit enter and it blanks it out for you. So you can look through those if you want to use some of those different little commands. And then for rolling dice, um, it's you just use the square brackets. So you do a square bracket and let's say 2d6 and close it with the square bracket, hit return and there you go. You can point at it there and it'll show you what, what you rolled and and how many dice you're rolling. Now you can put math in there too so you can do square bracket, uh, you know, 2d 25, 225 set of dice if that existed, and so you gave yourself a plus 5 to your roll. And now you hit return, and it'll, if it gives you the total there, and you point at it, it shows you what you rolled and, and what the bonus you gave yourself. So that's pretty basic along there. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is the macro windows. The macros are basically the shortcut buttons. So instead of having to type all the stuff in longhand, you can you know save them in a little shortcut button. So you can just click on it, and it'll do the rolling or, and so forth for you. So there's three different macro windows, and I don't want to get you confused by this at all because they're all, you know, they're all the macros are all the same. It's just what location the macros are being stored. So you have the global, campaign, and selected. Global is just if you pop up that window, if you and you start creating macros, do add macro, and then you right click and edit, and then you just type in here exactly what you would type in to the chat window. These ones are stored within your computer. So as long as you're operating map tool on this particular computer, those will be there. If you move to a different computer, they won't be. Um, if you do the campaign window, these are ones that the GM, whatever camp campaign files, just where you, the file with the maps in it. So whatever file he's using there, he would have these campaign files within his campaign, and they get transferred to you, and you could use them that way. Otherwise, the last way is the selected. And this is, you can actually if you start adding macros into here, you're actually program them, programming them into this particular token. And then you can right click on the token and oh, it's off the screen there. Let me move it up here. You can see you can actually save the token on your computer if you'd like. Or your GM could and those tokens would be in that particular token. I mean those macros would be in that particular token. Now if you're using map tool as a very in a very basic way, you might just be using the map and having uh, you know, just some basic die rolls and doing all the math yourselves and all the tracking yourselves and pieces of paper and so forth. But with Map Tool, you can get more advanced and have all the tracking automated and all the math done automated for you. And you're, this will be up to your GMs. So you don't really have to worry about this, but he could go out there. There's a bunch of frameworks and macro sets that people have made for different systems that he might get and, you know, email to you or, or set up the token for you. Um, or you guys might come up with something yourself, or he might come up with something yourself and send you those. But you don't really have to worry about how those are set up. The GM would take care of that, and then you'd just have one of those windows open with the different macros in them that would take care of, you know, stat rolling or or your weapon rolling to hit and that sort of thing. But then just so you know that you will probably have your chat window open and then one of these other windows open as well, and you can configure them, like I said, you know, in many different ways. Um, I suppose the last thing I should talk about is you do it. There is an initiative option that if you're not going to track it yourselves, you does an initiative window that you can use here. So you might have that open as well, depending if you guys use that or not. 
But that is really it for all the different options for a player. The different things I talked about with like the macros and so forth again would be handled by the GM. So you just really need to know how to move around the map and just know that if you do have macros, you'll have one of those windows open. You'll have a bunch of different named buttons that you'll click on. And then, of course, connecting to the other computers. So just sit back and enjoy map.